Grateful for your presence tonight. We have the opportunity to kind of share with you, uh, me as well as some other team members, about the uh, mission trip to Panama we went on this year, 2020. This is a, a kind of mission opportunity that I've been familiar with for a, a few years, a little bit unique in that, or at least different for me, uh, in that the goal or the, the centerpiece of the mission work is to offer free English classes, and then the material of the class is the Bible. We talk about the Bible, specifically the Gospel of Matthew. Panama is a unique country in the sense that I've been to some other places and English is not nearly as important to them, which would sort of make sense, but for some reason, beyond me, I suppose it's because of Panama's econ economics, a lot of world banking there, the Panama Canal, and some other things, the desire for them to improve in their English is very, very important to them. In fact, we have met people that would have multiple doctorate degrees who could not advance in their career because their English wasn't fluent. And so they, are, they have English classes uh, beginning in kindergarten all the way through their college experience trying to, trying to gain that kind of uh, English fluency. And so when we show up, now there are a lot of professional organizations, especially in the capital in Panama City, where, where people have to pay to take classes. So when we show up and offer two things, free classes, which is uh, kind of mind-boggling to them uh, and because it's very valuable, and number two, that they get an opportunity to speak with North Americans. As they're working on trying to teach English in the language, most of their instructors, of course, through their school system are, of course, fellow Panamanians. And so they'll make some of the same mistakes that non-native speakers make, either in their conjugation or in their accent and so on. And so if they get a chance to talk to a North American, especially if they hear they're from West Texas, <laughs> um, they're excited about practicing their vocabulary, practicing their pronunciation of certain words, and some of them get bad habits from some of us, but oh well. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the background or, or, or what happens in this ministry. And what I love about it is in other, other projects we've done in the past, we'll, we'll go into a service project, which is a beautiful thing, but you don't get to interact much uh, with folks because of the language barrier. And so the idea of being able to speak English and help them practice their conversational English makes it unique because you actually get to talk with folks. So that's kind of where uh, that mission, oh, more than probably 15 years ago, began as far as going to Panama. Um, just so you remember where it's at, that's in Central America where the canal is. But this is different. Um, the last few years, rather than going to Panama City, we've gone to a little town called Torti. It's only about 10,000 people. It's one of the, the uh, transcontinental highway runs through Panama and then down into Colombia. Torti is one of the last towns before you hit what they call the frontier. Years ago, to try to help stem the drug trade from Colombia, they severed the transcontinental highway. I think it's 20 or maybe it's 30 miles. It just There's no road and it's just jungle trying to help slow down the control of the drugs. When you go past Torti very much further, you hit a checkpoint. You have to give them your passport number. They ask you when you plan on being back. That way, if you're not back when you said you would, they'll miss you. Right? I'm not sure what happens beyond that other than, well, that's a shame. We miss them, you know, as far as that goes. So tortilla is still on the, um, what's the word I want to use, Doug? The civilized side of the border? I'm not sure the, the, the territory. I can't think of the right word there. Just outside the Darien, right, which is primarily indigenous people, uh, two different tribes there. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, that all happened because I went with uh, Doug. Um, if you're familiar with Panama Mission Relief, a, a beautiful ministry that serves primarily the indigenous folks in Darien, Doug uh, leads that ministry. And you want to know more about that, you want to talk to Doug. I made the, no, I had the blessing of going with Doug. Uh, and uh, our canoe got turned over and we got to go swimming and lots of fun things happened on that trip, which kept us around Torti. And so it made me wonder if there was a place for this English lesson kind of ministry or mission work to take place. Much, much smaller size in Torti, but what they said was, yeah, but we never get this opportunity. So it sounded like something that we would look into, and so this is our second trip to Torti uh, teaching English. It's so desired. The main purpose, this is the church building. They decorate more for Christmas than we do. Uh, 
we walked in there and went, wow, they, they have a couple of, their holidays kind of run into January a little bit on that. And so this is the church building of the congregation in Torti because one of the critical elements, I think, to a short-term mission trip is if you don't have a congregation there you're partnering with, when you create opportunities and when you have conversations and you're there for a week or two, and then you're gone. So what happens next? How do you, how do you, how do you continue that relationship, seed planning, or teaching? And so the congregation there is a neat uh, congregation, uh, a healthy congregation of about 50 or 60 or so. Uh, and so that was a, a, an opportunity to partner with them. So the goal was, let's go down, let's teach English, let's draw some students, let's make some connections, and then the local church will have some connections that they can visit with and follow up with. Uh, and help them evangelize their community by offering to them this special chance to speak with real North Americans. We kind of do that on an everyday basis, but they thought that was pretty interesting. So the other wrinkle that makes it kind of wild in Torti is that we're, we're partnering with the church, uh, but oops, one thing I want to say about the church building, so you can back up one more, there we go. Uh, it's a very nice facility, but you see the air conditioning built in the wall, that's the holes in the wall. You know, the tile that has the light coming through, that's the air conditioning, and it's a tin roof. So if it rains, you can't hear, and it's kind of hot and humid, which for us wimpy North Americans, that's kind of rough. So we're blessed that the University of Panama offers their facility to us. Um, it is a small town, and so this is an extension, and it's only about two years old, the extension in this area. It's kind of odd. They have instructors coming down or professors coming down from Panama City on weekends. So if you're taking classes, you take class all day long, Saturday and Sunday, every other weekend. Which, you know, that's better than nothing, but can you imagine taking a class for two full days every other weekend? I guess some classes that would work out okay, but one of the things that they also teach is English. Can you imagine trying to learn another language if you worked on it every other weekend? I mentioned how important English was to them. One of the things that Panama requires is in order for them to get a college degree, they have to pass an English proficiency test or they don't get a degree. So they're pretty motivated. So the university contacted us after our first trip and said, you know, you can use the facility for free. We'd love to have you here. We'd love to give you all of our students. I think at this extension, I'm not sure where the number is now, but it was somewhere around 900 students or so here. You can have all of our students, uh, and we'd love for you to handle the whole nation. And we're like, um, um, wait, 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 wait. We're not sure about all that. Now, the exciting part is, is what we're doing, the material we use is the Gospel of Matthew. So would we love to talk? about the Gospel of Matthew with every college student in Panama? Yeah. So pretty excited about that opportunity. Um, here's a picture of, there's the open hallways. Those are classrooms there, and you're, hey, and there's me. <laughs> Hi. I have a face for radio. Look at that. There we go. So there's the, there's the, the classrooms, a the two-story building. When you're in the classrooms looking back out, that's, across the parking lot, unpaved, of course, and just some of the scenery. The reason why I like this picture is that's a, it was a Nissan, wasn't it? It was a Nissan van uh, with no front end. You are the front end. The engine's behind you. And it's a diesel stick shift. I hadn't driven a stick shift in a while. What a great refresher to do in Central America. That was getting out of Panama City alive was a fun thing. The other thing that's pretty neat to know, there were six of us on the team. I want you to know that is a 15-passenger van that six of us filled up pretty good. Yes, we're a little bit uh, more significant than the average Panamanian. We'll, we'll just go with that. Uh, where we had the opportunity to stay, is so, so you know there are different kind of trips. There's a nice little hotel uh, in, in uh, Torti that we have stayed at the last couple of times. Uh, the food's really good. You have uh, some dining inside and outside. Here's the pathway up that little building you can see through the foliage is some of the rooms. I took this picture because it reminds me a lot of being over by the mall here in Midland. It's a kind of a similar, <laughs> it's kind of a similar. And that's just, what, what strikes me as odd is that's just normal there. You know, that's, that's like me looking at my yard going, oh, I need to mow it. And they're like, yeah, we got to do some trimming. I'm like, whoa, look at all this color. And and the, the parrots and parakeets and the hummingbirds and things flying around. 
So one of the challenges about this particular mission trip that I'll come back to at the end and be asking you to pray for. So the genesis, uh, genesis of this is we're going to do English classes and we're going to talk the Gospel of Matthew and this is going to be great. And so when the university said, hey, we'd like you to work with our students, and I'm thinking, wow, university students, we're going to rock and roll. We're going to be, this is going to be fantastic. So what's different about Torti is the English fluency level is very, very low. And so we had these advanced materials, and this team was so great and flexible because we trained for and prepared for and studied for. We're going to have all these really in-depth conversations because we're going to have fluent speakers, and we had folks that barely had English. In fact, our basic level book was too advanced. Root and Sarah Kate jumped in and started taking large groups of just beginners who barely had any English and what really startled me when I, when I got to visit with some of the university officials, I said, hey, so uh, we have some of your students. And they said, yes, thank you very much. And I said, yeah, so I've noticed that their English is kind of low. And they said, well, yeah, all of our students are low. In fact, most of them are lower than the ones you're talking to. Oh, this is college, and they're supposed to pass a proficiency test, and we're, I don't know, uh, Sarah Kate, where would you assess? Would you say they had a, and I don't even know, is that a first grade level English? Would you say that even? Not even that, Root? You had the beginners. That's true. Y'all were doing, doing basic greetings, how are you, and, and, and colors and days of the week. And so that made it really different. Like, whoa, okay, so this is a whole different setting Having said that, what I thought was fascinating is we connected with the people, our students, more than we ever have before. In fact, we had the challenge that some of our students were so excited that they brought uh, meals they had home cooked and brought to us to eat, and we're like, thanks. Um, and most of us ate it, and most of us survived. So, but you, you know, you kind of like, um, you know, is this going to be okay kind of thing. So there were really good relationship connections, but we really struggled with the language being so low, how to really have conversations. Um, one of our team members was Lance Howard, and I'm going to give him a few minutes, if you would, to kind of share your thoughts. And then you'll get to the slide that says Lee's name, and I'll let Lee follow you. Well, we had a really great trip. It was a lot of fun. Uh, going down to Torti, the weather was perfect. The travel went fine. You know, you always worry about that when you're going out of the country, especially to a third world country. It, everything went great. Uh, really enjoyed the work. Uh, as Mike said, it was a challenge. We struggled com communicating with these guys, but Root really helped us out in a lot of a lot of situations. And having studied a little bit, you know, we we had some really basic conversations with people. But it's amazing how you can connect with somebody. When you spend an hour, five days in a row, with somebody who really doesn't speak your language, connecting and just visiting and talking about each other, getting to know each other, understanding what they're going to struggle with, you know, by the end of it, and you know, being prepared for it, you know, kind of plan it out for the next day, how you're going to communicate this idea to them, and so it was a lot of fun, uh, very, very meaningful. Uh, the, uh, the most meaningful part, I would say, is meeting with the church there at Torti. Those people, I mean, this is my second trip down there, and I just love every one of them. I mean, they're just the most sincere people, uh, big hearts, and they'll do anything for you, and they really want your time, and they really want to talk to you, get to know you, and uh, I love them. They're, they're wonderful people. Um, the thing that encouraged me the most about the trip going down there was the students. Just having that time with them uh, and just knowing that we're doing some good. We're, we're speaking about things that matter and challenging them. Shining a light, even, even though it's just a little bit, shining a light into their life about the truth. Hopefully we'll do a little better on that uh, in, in years to come if we get to go some more, Lord willing. Um, I was blessed to have some great students. This guy that I'm meeting with right here, his name is uh, Nick Espinosa. Uh, Nick was one of the more fluent. Uh, uh, he was almost to, a media, uh, to an intermediate level. We had to go back to the beginner book, and, but uh, he's a really brilliant guy. 
I, and uh, we went through that, uh, the whole beginner book, the level two beginner book in about two days, and which I think was 15 lessons or something, 14 lessons. But he was, he was smart, he learned really fast. So we got to get into the intermediate book by the end of the class and, and do some, uh, some advanced stuff. His, uh, he's different than most of the uh, people that are there. Um, he uh, comes from a really good family. Um, he completed high school, in fact, he's 18 years old. He had graduated, I think, uh, at the end of uh, the year, last year, and he's planning to go next semester to college to start college. He plans to uh, 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 go into uh, flying, become a pilot, a commercial pilot with an airline, and uh, um, you can tell he's going to do all of it. He's going to be a very successful young man. He was different than most. Um, the, uh, uh, the average student that we had there, the average person that you meet in Torti, was uh, uh, maybe finished sixth grade. Uh, once they get past sixth grade, then it costs twenty-five dollars a month. Is it a month? Yeah, to go to to go to uh, continue school, and most families can't afford that, and so they they finish about sixth grade, um, and they will tell you if they got to go on, and finish uh, high school, and it, it's it's kind of a unique deal. So, Nick was wonderful. Uh, we learned a lot. Uh, next student is uh, this is Ernesto. And uh, Ernesto is one of the members of the church at Torti. He, uh, uh, older gentleman, uh, his wife and family all go to the church at Torti with us. Um, he uh, speaks very, very little English and has a speech impediment and was, was very difficult, but just wonderful guy, big heart. Um, he, uh, last trip uh, that we were there, he made all of us sandals out of leather, <laughs> handmade sandals. He measured our foot uh, one, one Sunday and brought them back the next Sunday. Uh, first to try on and uh, still have those. Um, <clears throat> so so uh, the really wonderful, th uh, unique experience that I had on this trip was we got a, a day at the at the end, at Monday through Friday, working really hard till eight nine o'clock every night uh, uh, with at, at the university, meeting with everybody. So Saturday's our free day. I'm I'm leaving Monday morning. The, the rest of the team's hanging around to go to an island and have a little bit more fun, but I'm not going to go with them, so uh, Saturday was my day. Well, so we got up that morning as a team, and we went down to the river, and beautiful little river, and uh, uh, a lot filled with fish, some kids came down, they're swimming in the river, it's hot, believe me, it's 90 plus degrees, and uh, they're cooling down the river, and so when we're done, um, Kim Rao, the, one of the missionaries down there that was kind of with us a lot of the time we were there, said, hey, let's... Uh, Let's go up over the mountain, hop in my 4x4, four four, and we'll go up over the mountain. There's some coffee plantations up there, and we'll just go sightseeing. And so Lee Heiss and I both did, and hopped in the truck. The ladies went on back to the hotel, and Mike, and he had a meeting he didn't want to be late for that evening with the elders. And so it was just me and Lee and Kim, and we went up over uh, the mountain, climbed up over like 1,600 feet, just beautiful, going through the jungle, teak plantations all around us, uh, just very, very interesting drive, and we get to the end of the road, and you can see the Pacific Ocean off in the distance out there, you know, down, like I said, we're 1,600 feet, so it's down, and it's just beautiful, and I said, hey, I wonder if there's any way we can get there, and Kim says, no, I think the road quits right here, but I wonder if there's another way, so he, he turned around and went back out and came up to the, this little Tienda store, uh, which is somebody's house, and their window's open, and you can go up to the window and buy Cokes, okay? And it's not Cokes, it's uh, Looney, I think was the name of their soda down there. And so we got some and asked directions. He said, it's about two hours. And so I said, great. You know, well, Kim said, we got to do this. And so I said, you sure? I mean, we're going to be after dark getting back. He said, yeah, that'd be, that'd be fine. So we, we went on and took off. And we're going through the jungle, okay, four by four, low. Had 11 river crossings, I counted. And had, uh, I mean, we're going like 10 miles an hour most of the time. Uh, it was only 30 miles uh, total to, uh, to we're having to traverse, uh, but we it was right at two hours, and we come up, and uh, one of the things that on the way there, we passed this little school, and I thought this was unique, and I wanted to tell you about it, because this school's on a dirt road 20 miles away from a paved highway, okay? There are thatched roof houses, one-room houses all around this thing, and, you know, maybe a mile, two miles apart. 
This is where kids come to school every day. I mean, the sign on the door says, Happy Mother's Day. Okay? So, I mean, it's just, it's not at all like what we would experience in thinking that this is a school, all right? Uh, and so, uh, very unique. Uh, there was a church out there, and so we could tell that this was a little community. Anyway, so we go on from there. I wanted to tell you about that because it's quite different. We go on from there, and we come up, and we finally, after about two hours, here's the view. The first time we can see the ocean, a couple of shrimp boats on the horizon out there. The tree is just a beautiful little spot. Um, went on down that road. Uh, it's a very steep from there, but uh, got on down and came up on a beach. And uh, we just get down on the beach, and it's just got this, this water. Now, this is two hours down a dirt road through the jungle to get here. And that is the road, okay, to get to this place. This is the only way you get here, okay? So we come up on uh, this little tienda uh, and come to the window, and we ask, uh, uh, you know, hey, it's, you know, it's, we hadn't had anything to eat since breakfast. And it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon now. I said, is there any way we can get something to eat? Well, they had candy is all they had. Um, and, and Cokes. And so he said, well, the woman across the street will cook for you. I said, really? He said, yeah, she'll, she'll, she'll fix you a meal. So Kim goes across the street and asks in Spanish, said, you know, but is there a place we can get a meal around here? She said, I will cook for you. I will go down to the fisherman, and I will buy three fish, and I'll cook for you. And so I said, great, <laughs> wonderful. I said, this is going to be an interesting day. So uh, she goes on down. She puts this plastic table out in her yard. Look at this in her yard there and the view that we have. Notice, of course, the, uh, the machete. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's, it's on the first post past the tree to the right, just stuck right into the top of the tree. And the, the boat that you see past the tree on the left is a dugout made out of one solid tree carved out, hand carved. Most of the boats down there are like that. So it's a lot of interesting things in that picture. But we sat there for about 45 minutes and, uh, and visited in just this beautiful little spot. Um, her husband, we see, come out of the house, and he takes this bamboo pole off the side of the, the house, takes an antenna off of it, this long bamboo pole, I mean like 30 feet long or something, uh, and goes across the street. Now, across the street there is the uh, Panama uh, Police, Naval, and Air Force, okay? So that's... That's all in that, and that sign on the building says Panama Police, Naval, and Air Force, and that's what they do is protect the town there. And, and uh, there are no local governments there. There aren't counties. There aren't city governments. This is, it's all Panama Federal, as far as I can tell. So there's, on the trees on the side of the police station there are lime trees and plantains. He takes the pole across the street, and he's knocking limes off the tree and plantains off the plantain tree, and he goes back in the house, puts his, his pole up, and after about 45 minutes, he comes out. <coughs> Ooh, sorry. There it is. I'm going to get it there in a minute. Okay, Corvina, uh, a Corvina fish with fried plantains. And you see the limes, the orange meat of the limes and everything. Delicious meal. So anyway, very unique day uh, and very enjoyable, very memorable, something I'll remember the rest of my life. So Panama is a beautiful country. Um, the people that we're meeting with, uh, are just wonderful, and there's a lot of opportunity there. That's all I have. So Lee will take over. Well, that was a very enjoyable trip. We uh, really, I think, had a good time. We did some good. And here I have uh, one of my students. One of the, the good things is uh, that Becky and I got the, I guess, the better or more advanced English-speaking students. So with my minimal and her minimal Spanish, we, uh, we did pretty good. And in fact, most or several of our, a couple of our students, hers and mine, actually progressed much farther in the lessons than what we'd even been trained for. So 
we had to really scramble to uh, get all the lessons complete because those students were extremely interested and quite a surprise to me because right now I'm uh, teaching part-time over at Hector County ISD and the work ethic of the students in Panama, let's just say, is a little better than the average student in the average classroom in a junior high or high school in America these days. They were real interested in learning and they really, really worked ahead of the lessons and got more done than what we thought. Panama is, uh, it's a beautiful country. I mean, they have trees, they have water, they have hills, mountains, and I really enjoyed uh, Kim taking Lance and I on the, the journey across the, uh, we went up on some hillsides and then down to the Pacific Ocean and it was really quite an experience. Uh, one thing, Lance, you did miss is uh, our trip to uh, Contadora Island. That was a, a, a beautiful resort island and it was really nice to get away. And I think every time that uh, a group goes to Panama, they, they usually will take at least a day or so and do an extra trip beyond uh, all of the work. But uh, the work was uh, strenuous in, in some senses because uh, the days were long. Uh, I'm used to getting off at four and teaching in America and uh, I think we stayed up until nine some days, so. But it was worth it, and the uh, people are, are great over there. They are uh, very friendly, and uh, we enjoyed the, some of the wildlife, particularly uh, Becky took some pictures of, uh, they had some hummingbird feeders, and she took pictures of the hummingbirds. And I think uh, as far as my wife, Becky, she said that her greatest experience was probably getting to teach. She has not done a lot of that in her life and she really enjoyed teaching these eager students. And then I guess the most fulfilling thing to her was the uh, beauty and the uh, loveliness of the the Christians there in Torti and the way they uh, we worship with them two Sundays and the way they welcomed us into their uh, church and it was just really really nice. Uh, the of course the trip was wonderful uh, and I, I will uh, give Mike a compliment. I'm telling you what. He, he got in there and really, really drove that van, and we were in some pretty tough situations, and he drove on some roads that make uh, Midland roads really look good because over there you got a, you got a pothole every three or four feet in some parts of that road. So he did a good job getting us around the country. And uh, I do want to, uh, I guess, way I can sum this up, I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse, starting in verse 1. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. And they went beyond our expectations, having given themselves first to all the Lord they gave themselves by the will of God also to us. And I guess in 
summary, truly, this is the attitude of the students that we ran into and the, the people that were members of the church in Torte. They were uh, really gracious. They cooked meals for us. They brought gifts. One of Becky's gifts from one of the church members in our lessons, we talked about John the Baptist. And so one of the uh, ladies at the church made Becky a little uh, model of a grasshopper made out of sticks and leaves. And I think she still has it, but that was really, really neat because uh, we weren't sure if they had locust or grasshoppers in Panama, but apparently they did. Um, in summary, I would just say uh, some of you here tonight might want to look at going on the trip. I think the cost is probably somewhere around $1,500. That includes the air fare and uh, staying in the hotel. And uh, that's one thing that uh, was surprising to me is those people down there, they have to pay for many items. They have to pay what we pay here in Midland. Their gasoline was actually a little more expensive than what it is in Midland. And we were paying pretty, pretty tough prices. Uh, you'd go in the grocery store and, uh, you know, those people were paying prices fairly equivalent to what we pay right here in Midland. And, and they don't have the income. So truly it is an experience and I would encourage uh, some of y'all to go down there. Uh, also out in the foyer, uh, I do have some uh, Panamanian money. Let's, let's see if I can figure this slide out. Okay, there's one of the students. One thing that was really nice is our college rooms were air conditioned here's uh, here's my wife Becky with one of her students here's one of the students that uh, she was so enthusiastic that we doubled up on her and she asked for lessons from both Becky and I here's uh, a view of uh, one of the mountains out by the college now this is what I thought was neat, this is our restaurant cat. Every uh, restaurant, most of them are open door and uh, most of them have at least one cat that hangs around, sometimes cats and dogs. And that's it. Okay, thank you. What Lee didn't say is I think this is the picture of the one-eyed cat. This was a tough cat. Just to finish up some of the other students, we did eat pretty good. This is one of the members of the church who grilled chicken on that grill. Best chicken I've ever had to date is right off of that grill. I, I think it's because they eat jungle bugs. I don't know what the chickens there eat, but it's good. So we would get a bunch of chicken and take it to the school every day, but we did have breakfast uh, at the restaurant there, which normally went well. Um, that's a glass plate, and... Uh, Sarah Kate ordered uh, eggs, eggs with cheese, and so she got an egg with cheese. That's a, that's a slice of cheese. You pull the plastic off. If you want to know more about that story, you can talk to Sarah Kate, and, and she can explain that to you. Uh, others had the breakfast of champions. Uh, there were several times where we had to make sure we got Diet Coke or face the consequences. Um, let's see. As we said, the beginner's classes, the, the, the original idea is you meet one-on-one. -on -one. And so, as Lee said, he and, and Becky had a lot of the more advanced students they could visit with them one-on-one. -on -one. The beginners, you really couldn't have that much of a conversation. So that was more of a class setting. And so Root had a beginner's class, uh, and they really connected uh, with each other. This is the class giving Root uh, some gifts. Uh, one of the things that Root said that was meaningful to her was just the connection, especially with the church members, uh, would you say half of the class was church members? About half, something like that? And being able to connect with them was meaningful. Sarah Kate was our other beginner class. This is one of the early classes she had, and then she's got a larger group class. 
there. Um, I think you had three different classes. Um, and this is, to summarize, three, three ways or three reasons to encourage you to go on mission trips when you can, like Lee said. Number one, you're going to see uh, another part of the world. In this particular case, it's hot and humid, but it's also beautiful. It's different. And there's things about it you really like, and there's things about home that you'll appreciate. But it's good for you uh, to see some things beyond what you're used to. Secondly, you're going to have adventures you wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, this is Sarah Kate undergoing a rigorous golf uh, cart uh, driving training course, and she can tell you more about that. She just barely passed is what I'll tell you about that. Uh, you can tell by her instructor's expression. The other thing is that you're going to be able to build a relationship with the people you go with. Lance had already returned home. This is our extra couple of days, and so uh, we've never spent any time with uh, the Heises to speak of, and that was a uh, part of the blessing of the trip is getting to spend time with people you don't normally get to be with, and so that's a benefit. Uh, this is one of Ruth's students that we invited everybody to come to church with us the second Sunday, and this is one of the students that actually came and visited the church that following Sunday. So you're going to be able to see a part of the country you hadn't seen before. You're going to see beautiful things. You're going to uh, be able to meet different people. We got to uh, speak a little bit to the church, and then uh, Sarah Kate made a sign, uh, and then the elders here signed it, and the team members signed it, uh, and others that had gone to Panama before that knows this church. And it's First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2, and she put the lettering on it in, in both English and Spanish. We give thanks to God always for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers. It is a beautiful thing to worship with your brothers and sisters in Christ in a different part of the world that you've never met. And to see their joy and to see what they have, what they're used to. And one of the powerful lessons that you ought to learn from such experiences on the flight home is, you know, we've been really blessed. And we really ought to be grateful. And we really ought to be generous. That's what you learn when you get to see other things. So we continue to ask for your prayers. Uh, this is, I should have mentioned, standing there in front of me and between me and Lance is uh, are two of the elders there. Um, and they are a, a warm and welcoming, welcoming group. If you get an opportunity to go on a mission trip, I'd encourage you for those three reasons to go, and I know that you'd be blessed by it and that you have an opportunity to bless others. It, it is interesting watching them about, wow, you traveled all the way here. You spent your money to come here to, to help me with this. Why would you do that? Well, because we've been blessed, and that's what Christians do is share the blessings they've been given. Tonight, as we conclude uh, this presentation, I appreciate your attention and uh, want to encourage you as well that wherever you're coming from, maybe, maybe you're in a place where you need to learn to be a little more content with what God is doing. Maybe it's a place, you're at a place where you need to trust God more in your life. Maybe it's finally time to decide to follow Christ. If we can help you in any way, we always offer an invitation. We know the Spirit works. Uh, whenever his people gather and beyond. And so we want to stop what we're doing and say, we're going to stand and sing in just a moment. And if we can pray with you, if we can pray for you, encourage you in any way, we invite you to one of these pews or you can go out in the foyer and visit with a shepherd there on the left-hand side as you go out. But we ask you to come if you need to as together we stand and sing.